Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a cattle panel trellis. First thing, and the reason it took me so long, it's been a year since I got this property, is they are 16 feet long, about 4 feet high. So you're going to have to get a truck to bring them in. They do fold over, so if you have an 8 foot bed or something that you can secure them that's uh, got about 8 feet, you'll be able to do it. Let's go inside the garden. We're going to secure it two ways. There's always a thousand ways you can do something. I'm going to build a wooden frame at the base of my raised bed where they'll just slip in. This way I can just pop them in and out and then I'm also going to use T-posts to secure them. Before we get to it, I want to show you what they look up look like just put up by themselves and talk to you a little bit about how the sun tracks because you want to decide where's you know the best place to put your cattle panel so it doesn't shade out the rest of your garden and if you look here they are just bent and dropped into the walking space the path space of my garden they're going to be about eight feet high right here in the center you'll be able to walk through and harvest you know as you wish so I'm inside obviously the uh, trellis area the tunnel and my sun tracks this way now tracking the sun's important because you may not want to set this up where it casts zero shade you may want to set, set it up where it casts a lot of shade I'll explain that in a second so my sun tracks from the left side all the way around and then most of the sun sits right here so I have it set up for me so that it casts the least amount of shade but if you have a really sunny area you enjoy growing greens you may want to set the tunnel up if you're using my space since the sun is over there this way so all the shade is cast there and maybe on the opposite side the side that has all the shade you want to plant your greens your leafy greens lettuces and stuff like that and the reason you would do that is because that extra shade will allow your leafy greens not to bolt not to flower not to get bitter and they're going to taste better and grow longer as the summer sun comes up so you may want to set this up to cast shade and plant vegetables in the shade or you may want to maximize the sun and put it in a way that sun falls throughout your garden now you may not be using raised beds so I'll show you how to use um, the T post to secure it this is wobbly but it's not going to fall over some T posts will secure that what I'm going to do since I have a raised bed I'm going to put some wood right along here and I'm just going to insert my cattle panel into that and that will secure it and one of the things you want to look at is if you look at the bottom you can see that they bend in like this and you don't want that and when I create my garden I somewhat have a plan but I didn't really figure out the right width in the path so that if I put in paddle cannel it won't have that um, dip into the center or more so slant in the center so you want this part to be perpendicular perpendicular to the ground so we're gonna do the wood there we're gonna do T posts right over here so let's get that started this is the basic design I'm going to use to hold the cattle panel in place for my taller raised beds. And you can see it's just a matter of securing some 2x4s together and leaving a space open for the cattle panel. And the reason I'm doing this is I want my panels to be able to uh, just get moved easily. If I want to change the garden around, I can just pull them out of here and insert them in other places. This, uh, the build is pretty easy. Um, these are different size 2x4s um, two too. I think I have 8 feet, 9 feet, and 10 feet. I'll show you why that's important in a second when we walk over there. But you just basically, you would flip this over, you know, get the boards in place, and then you're putting in screws. You want to use 2.5 inch to 3 inch screws about every foot. Now it's important that the first two screws you put in are right here and then you just make sure the boards are flush and then go down to the other side and you come down to the other side and put the other two screws in there so that it's flush all the way down if you kinda of start working your way up like this and you don't have the uh, boards uh, nice and parallel they'll get off whack and then you'll be upset because then you gotta go pull all the screws out so the first two screws go here the next two screws go down right at the end and then it's just every foot and you end up something with something like this to insert the cattle panel in. Now, because your frame beds are going to be different sizes, the dimensions are going to vary. So over here, and I don't know if you notice this, but when you buy boards that are eight foot boards, nine foot boards, or ten feet, ten foot boards, they're not 
exactly that. They could be a little bit less, they could be a little bit more. So this is an eight foot bed, but I capped it on the outside. So I really need um, a nine or 10 foot board to go on top of here to have the extra space to come here because we're going to put three inch screws into here and secure it. And then I'll come back and cut, come back and cut this off if I feel like doing that or I'll do it before. But I'm going to put what I just built right about here. And then when I slide this over and insert it, it'll get rid of the slant that's going in there. And this should be pretty secure. It's going to wobble a little bit, but it's not going to go anywhere. And if I wanted, I could put a T-post in here, but I'm going to save that for my raised beds. I'll show that to you right after this for um, the raised beds that are lower, that look like that. So I really like the, uh, the final outcome. I could have put these down lower depending on what the space is. I put them up on here again because I wanted this edge to be more uh, perpendicular with the ground. I also wanted to raise it up because I'm six feet tall. Now, you know, that reaches up to the point that I can't really get to the top unless I'm on my toes, but that will give me more room for different vegetables to be hanging there. And setting it up, I just dropped it in the right place so that I had the right tunnel shape with that uh, piece going straight up like that. When you secure this down, put one screw on this side first, once, and then with only one screw here, you can go to the other side and slide it around till you get it the right way. Don't put in three because you're not going to be able to move it. So once you put a screw in on this side, screw down on the other side, it's where you want it. You can just drop in two or three screws. I'll be able to just take out a handful of screws, move this if I don't want it here, or if something happens to the trellis, I can just replace it nice uh, and easily. Same thing over here on this side. So it's, it's, it's a great space. I'm getting excited for the uh, garden come uh, probably late spring, early summer to see what I can grow on here. The pieces that hang out, you could cut off with a saw if you want to, um, or when you drop your plant in right there, it's gonna cover that anyway. Wanted to show you the T-posts. So here are the different T-posts. You can get them at any uh, hardware store and they have this piece right here which is known as the T and you sink it into the ground from the bottom all the way up to here and that will secure it in place. I got a couple longer ones I think they're probably five feet maybe the other ones are four feet that second group is for the next part of the video and the taller post is gonna go right there I'll sink that into the ground right up to the T part and then I'll secure both pieces to that and that will set up my cattle panel for this part of the garden. Also with time, the newer wood will look exactly like this wood uh, on the bottom if that <laughs> seems to bother you. I learned a long time ago not to worry about perfection in the garden. I was just thinking too while I was over here, I could drop a piece of cattle panel right into here, let it press against here and to the other side let it press against there. It would be a lower arch but it'd be perfect for trellising cucumbers, and I may do that. And then when I fill it with dirt, it's gonna keep it all in place. So let's, let me uh, start putting in the T-post for the next part of the uh, cattle panel trellis. All right, the second one's in place, and I actually did the third one. So if you're gonna use the four foot post, you're gonna to wanna to use three, and you just space them out just like that. Put them where you want them to go. You don't need the frame bed around there. This will work in the ground. Because these are knocked in pretty far, the outward pressure of the panel is going this way, pressing against here. I don't even need to secure it, but I'll go ahead and use some uh, metal wire or some rope or something and secure the cattle, paddle, <laughs> the cattle panel onto there, both sides. Here's the view, and then I'll go walk over to the third one. That one's pretty solid. The only knock against using the t-posts is sometimes you run into stone and I had to dig that out of the way so that's one here is the first one I did which I really like nice and high and then this is the one that I was just thinking about on the fly and that's gonna be I know it's getting dark but this is where I'm going to put cucumbers I think maybe some melons and this is actually going to shade off the container in the flower area, which I want because when it gets to the hot summer, that dries out too much. So this is an example of one that will cast shade to the other side. And then the other two are examples where I'm maximizing the sun 
uh, in my garden. Hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you some ideas of how you can use cattle panel for vertical, vertical gardening. Thanks for watching.